the first two instructions using the move and logical category are the move and move with mask. Move is an, a misnomer in terms of these instructions. Normally when you move something, you move it from one place to another place, from a source to a destination. When you're finished, it only exists at the destination. It is no longer where it was originally placed. So really, the move instructions should be called word copy because they copy the value from the source to the destination. The only difference between a move and a move with mask is that when you use the move instruction, it, entire, it copies the entire word. When you move with mask, you block some of the bits of the 16-bit value from moving into the destination. So if you had an input module, 16-bit input module, and you only wanted to move three or four of the bit values from that word in memory, you would use a move with mask. We had you delete all of the logic and then add these rungs of logic. Save your program, download, and go online. <coughs> Making sure that all the registers that you're using or addressing with these instructions are cleared and all the inputs are off. Then we had you toggle bit 0 of data file B3, word 1, on and then off and then observe the memory location output colon 0.0, .0 as well as the output LEDs on your demo. Uh, both instructions give the same results because 0 is 0. So if you're moving 0 someplace and it was already 0, well it's still 0. In the first rung, you are transferring the bit pattern from memory location N70 to memory location O colon 0.0. .0. Remember that O colon 0.0, .0 is the output register that is going to be moved to the actual outputs on this PLC. So whatever v values that you put into O colon 0.0, .0 that's what's going to show up on the output LEDs on your demo. <coughs> now, toggle B3 on again and enter a value of 15 into N70. Once you've done that, what value do you have in the destination memory location in the move instruction? 15. Are there any LEDs on? Oh, yes, there are. How many are on? All four of them. If you have the MicroLogix 10 point, you only have four outputs. If you have a larger processor, you should still only have the first four outputs on. What is 15 in binary? In other words, looking at those four output LEDs, they each represent a binary bit in that word memory. So what is 15 in binary? 1, 1, 1, 1. All four of the first four bits are on. Now toggle B3 0 slash 0 to the off state. Now if you couldn't remember how to toggle B3 0 0 on and off, you right click on B3 0 and there's a selection down there that says toggle. So you right click toggle it on, right click toggle it off. Okay, so you toggle B3 0 slash 0 off. What value do you have in the destination memory location in the move with mask instruction? Not the first one, but the second instruction, rung 1. What value do you have in the destination memory location? 15. It's still 15. Are there any LEDs on? Yes. How many? You should still have four LEDs on. What is 15 in binary? The same. Now, if you didn't know any better, you might look at rung 1. In other words, if these two rungs were separated in your um, program file, you could not see rung 0 and rung 1, the move and the mass move, both executing against the same destination, you might think that because rung 1 is true, in other words, B300 is off, true if off, execute the mask move. However, because the mask, 
is 0, 0, 0, 0, hex. That means 16 zeros. Whenever you execute the mass move, you are not moving anything into the destination because they're all blocked. So this is deceiving, yet a very interesting situation. Keep in mind, it appears that when the second rung became true, that it executed the same results as the first rung. This is not true. It did absolutely nothing to the memory of location 0.0.0. Whatever was in there is still in there because you blocked the source from being copied to the destination. The move and the mass move do not have a false execution. Any bits in the destination of the mass move instruction that are blocked by the mask are left as is when the instruction executes. If these two rungs were separating logic and could not be viewed together, you might look at the mask move or the move with mask rung being true and conclude that this rung determined the bit pattern in O colon 0.0. .0. Okay, to further demonstrate this, we had you add a clear instruction with in a, in a rung that had no permissives or no conditions, meaning it's unconditional. Rung 0, which executes a clear instruction on output colon 0.0, .0 executes every single time the program scans. So the clear instruction immediately clears output colon 0, 0.0. If rung 1 is true, then it moves the value from N70 into output colon 0, 0.0. If rung 2 is true, then it does a mask move from N70 into output colon 0, 0.0. However, this logic is scan dependent and last man wins. The clear instruction being unconditional, it clears the register in memory, the location in memory, O colon 0, 0 every single program scan. What is in there at the end of the program scan is dependent upon which of the next two rungs are true. Since last man wins, if rung 1 is true, there would be a 15 in there. If rung 2 is true, there would be a zero in there because at the beginning of the scan, the first rung, unconditional clear, O colon 0, 0, cleared that register. Since rung 1 is not true, it does not move 15 into there. Since rung 2 is true and everything is blocked anyway, it wouldn't matter what was in N70, it would not move in there. The point is that the clear instruction clears that register every single program scan. If you were to move the clear instruction, that unconditional rung zero, if you were to move that down to the bottom of these three rungs, so the first rung was move and the second rung was move with mask or mass move, and the third one was clear, it wouldn't make any difference which of those two rungs, the move or mass move, were true. The very last execution in the program scan, scan would have been a clear O colon 0.0. .0 O colon 0.0, .0 would always be clear and zero every single program scan. So this is called scan dependent logic. If you move the rungs around it doesn't work the same. Uh, in the next slide we're going to show you how you might combine these instructions into one rung to it won't prevent people from changing it but it reduces the possibility. Okay, now we've combined those three rungs into one rung with branch arounds. It's the identical logic, but now it's all contained in one rung. So at least if the rung gets moved, the order of the execution stays the same. Therefore, there's no effect on the results. Now with B300 in the off position, in other words, toggle it off and observing the output LEDs on your trainer, your trainer hardware, switch I colon zero, 0 on then off and then repeat the process switching 0 on and off, 1 on and off, 2 on and off, 3 on and off 
cycle through until you are familiar with the behavior. Now this is with B3 colon 0, 0 off, which means the mask move is the instructions being executed. Now I want you to open data file I or the input data file and lock it on top and I want you to watch the value in, in the binary display of the mask register. So in our mask move instruction we were using the input word I colon 0, .0 those 16 bits. Now you only have six inputs and we only have four outputs so really we can only use the first four inputs to watch the behavior. Okay so I also had you change the value in N70 to 4. If you didn't do that, if you left it 9 or 15 or whatever it was, it's just not going to work the same. So you got to change the value in N70 to 4. Repeat the cycling process one at a time, input 0 on then off, input 1 on then off, and so forth for those first four inputs 0 through 3. And then answer these questions. Do all four output LEDs energize with their corresponding inputs. In other words, when you turn on input 0, did output 0 come on? No. Why? Well, remember you put a 4 in N70. And a 4 in N70 is only going to turn on one bit in I colon 0, .0 and that would be the third or the bit 2. So the source in this case is 4 and which outputs energize? Output 2. Okay, now we've combined those three rungs into one rung with branch arounds. It's the identical logic, but now it's all contained in one rung. So at least if the rung gets moved, the order of the execution stays the same. Therefore, there's no effect on the results. Now with B300 in the off position, in other words, toggle it off and observing the output LEDs on your trainer, your trainer hardware, switch I colon zero, zero on then off, and then repeat the process switching 0 on and off, 1 on and off, 2 on and off, 3 on and off. Cycle through until you are familiar with the behavior. Now this is with B3 colon 0, 0 off, which means the mask move is the instructions being executed. Now I want you to open data file I, or the input data file and lock it on top and I want you to watch the value in, in the binary display of the mask register. So in our mask move instruction we were using the input word I colon 0, 0 those 16 bits. Now you only have six inputs and we only have four outputs so really we can only use the first four inputs to watch the behavior. Okay so I also had you change the value in N70 to 4. If you didn't do that, if you left it 9 or 15 or whatever it was, it's just not going to work the same. So you got to change the value in N70 to 4. Repeat the cycling process one at a time, input 0 on then off, input 1 on then off, and so forth for those first four inputs 0 through 3. And then answer these questions. Do all four output LEDs energize with their corresponding inputs. In other words, when you turn on input 0, did output 0 come on? No. Why? Well, remember you put a 4 in N70. And a 4 in N70 is only going to turn on one bit in I colon 0, 0 and that would be the third or the bit 2. So the source in this case is 4 and which outputs energize? Output 2.